Hey moms, welcome back to Rooted Homeschool. If you are new here, I'm Christina. I am a homeschooling mom of five kids, ages one, two, five, 10, and 13. I have been waiting all week to talk to you guys about tot school or preschool for three-year-olds. So not pre-K, but preschool. All week this week on my channel here at Rooted Homeschool, I've been talking to you guys about my curriculum choices for the upcoming 2021-2022 school year. And today is all about my three-year-old. Well, he'll be three in October. And I'm sharing with you what I plan to be doing with him next year. Today, just like the rest of the week, is a collaboration with my sweet friend Nikki over at Nikki Dockery. And today she's sharing her summer homeschool plans with you guys. So when you are done watching this video, be sure to click the link in the description box to go check out Nikki's summer homeschool plans or any of her other videos that you may have missed this week. If you missed yesterday's video, yesterday, both Nikki and I shared with you guys our family subjects. Beyond family subjects, each kid needs a little bit of targeted instruction, a little bit of independent learning. And so with a toddler or a preschooler, they're going to need some support in learning things like shapes and colors and letters and numbers and all of those things. A lot of those things are learned naturally through conversation and play and family experiences. And so before we jump into talking about curriculum and resources and all of those things, I am coming to you guys from the playroom today really to drive home the point that the most important thing I think for toddlers or preschoolers for their learning is learning through play. They need to move their bodies. They need to explore. They need to touch things. That is what they are built for at that stage. And so I'm going to share with you some of the ways that I make things happen just naturally in the way that I set things up in our playroom and really have this prepared environment for them to be able to do that. But I'll also share some resources that I'm really excited to use. So. I can tell you that I have a very active two-year-old boy who will be three in October. And so anything that I can do that gets him active and moving, but also includes learning is a win. So we have lots of things in the playroom here for him to climb on, for him to explore. We recently got him a wobble board, which the whole entire family loves. And if you haven't seen one, or tried one, highly recommend it. It is actually linked in my Amazon shop. You can grab the link to my Amazon shop below. But one thing that we also got that I've really found a lot of fun, not only for him, but also for my five-year-old, are these cards for all different positions and poses for them to try on the wobble board. And what's cool is some of them are independent, some of them you do with a partner, so you have to learn to collaborate and work together. And they also explain how to do it. So like if you wanna direct them, you can explain it in words. And it also tells you a variation and the benefits of that particular pose. So it's really great. There are 24 of these. These are a free download and I'll link these down below. So if you see behind me, I have this little shelf. I have some kind of theme usually going on in this learning shelf. Right now it is colors and shapes. I've done shapes before, I've done colors before. And so to mix it up this time, I included both colors and shapes. One of the books that I'll be using as a resource for him for tot school or preschool is this shape book. And if you haven't seen this, this is an amazing book for shapes because it really develops along with them. So in the beginning, it really starts with like meeting the shapes, like simple introduction to the shapes. And obviously they're very colorful and it also does include some prompts for color, like which shapes are green. And so they can point out the ones that are green. Then it starts isolating each shape and different things that are that shape. So they can start to like make sense of like circles all around. Going along with the book or kind of the learning of shapes in general, I also have this little puzzle here and this is really great. They're easy to grab for little hands and they also have the colors that they can match them up by color and by shape. 
So they've really been loving this one. Then along with colors, I love these little wooden nesting toys. And we have a few different ones. We have the rainbow, we have the cave, we have like the water, like the wave one. And they can make so many different structures with these. Sometimes I'll have it set out as like a tower or a cone or something like that because it really just like switches it up and makes it interesting for them. Both for colors and just in general, in terms of setting up the learning shelf, I absolutely love these little hello books by Highlights and I shared these in my summer reading video. So if you haven't seen these, these are put out by Highlights and I love Highlights, but these are great for younger kids because they are more of a coded page that can't rip or crumple and they always have some kind of theme. So this one is an issue all about colors. So it was perfect to go on my shapes and colors shelf. On the bottom, I have this little foam pegboard and I'll link this on my Amazon shop for you guys. And then I just put in a little basket next to it, all of the little shape pegs. And so they match up the shapes with the shape on here. And the first time I put it out, I put it out with just one each of each shape. And then when he sort of mastered that, I put out two. And that's where we're at right now. We have two of each shape. And then pretty soon I'll put out three um, because then he can stack them and I can say like, how many hearts do you have? And he can count them. So again, combining not only shapes and colors, but even starting to count. Lastly, on my shelf, and these are things that will get rotated in and out. I usually rotate this out every couple weeks. And then sometimes after a week, I might change one thing or even two things. Like we're in our second week of this shelf and I didn't have this shapes puzzle. And like I said, I only had one of each of these and I actually had them already in the pegboard to kind of show him until I got used to it. Oh, this is what you do with this. This little puzzle I got from the Target dollar spot and I absolutely love it. Not just because it has the colors, but underneath it also has the color in Spanish. So I'm gently trying to expose him to Spanish as well. And so we'll say yellow, amarillo, and stuff like that. So that's an example of how I implement this learning shelf in his learning in just like a fun way where he can just come in here and play or I can do it with him to kind of talk him through some of the concepts. I have not used these yet, but I can't wait. These are, you guessed it, thistles and biscuits. I've shared a lot about them this week and I'll continue to share because they are beautiful resources. They are super affordable. They are a small shop. It is a homeschooling mama who makes these. And this is the shapes kit. And so I printed these on like a thick, like cream colored cardstock, and I will just cut these and laminate these. I just discovered matte laminating sheets. I don't know if like you knew about this already, but I did not. And I'll show you how wonderful they are. There is no glare. So clearly I need to cut these out, but and this is another example of one of the resources that I will use for next year. And th these are the Into Nature Alphabet flashcards from Thistles and Biscuits. And what I love about these is not only that they're obviously beautiful and they include nature, but these also coincide with the Into the Woods, a gentle forest alphabet study that I shared in my first grade curriculum pick. So some of the resources within this I will use for my first grader and some I will use for my preschooler or my three-year-old. And so one of the things that I, that I shared with you guys that I would not be using with my first grader is this first sheet. So if you missed that first grade curriculum picks video, um, I shared with you that each letter of the alphabet has five pages and they all kind of go in this same structure. And this is really the only page that I would use right away with my preschooler. And I would maybe even print probably multiple copies of and then print one on card, one on card stock to laminate. And then when I feel like he's ready to even start trying to write those, then I would go ahead and print the full page. So I have so many ideas for this that I'll share with you. I'll try to be really quick. But in thinking about laminating just this top half, you can do things like have them fill the letters with Play-Doh. You can have them use dry erase markers to trace. You can have them use things like finger paint to fill them up. You can have so much fun with this over and over again 
if you laminate it. I'm a big fan of laminating because I like to be able to save things and use them again. But also I plan to do things like having a letter a week. So I would probably print one of these out for every day of the week and do something different with it each day. Like maybe one day I have him go in and use the bingo dotter and go in and dot the entire letter. Maybe other days I would do things like have the little pom-poms and have him glue the pom-poms inside of the letter. Sometimes just color, maybe watercolor. So there are so many different things that you can do with something like this, which I absolutely love. And then when he's ready, I can print the whole sheet and he can try writing those letters. It might not be until pre-K that he's ready for that. And that's absolutely fine. But I did want to share with you that these flashcards coincide with this. They're both from Thistles and Biscuits. And one of the pages that I shared the other day that they have for each letter is this simple sentence that has alliteration and beautiful nature imagery. And this one is about acorns. And of course, the flashcard for A is acorn. So I absolutely love how these kind of flow together in that way. So we've talked about shapes, we've talked about colors, we've talked about letters. So our absolute favorite one is this free download. It is the road numbers. And I only have four through nine here because we've already used one through three. I have them laminated and up in a basket um, here in the playroom because I rotate it out. So when I do counting and numbers, I have usually a tray that has the laminated road numbers in there with a little car. And so the way that he gets exposed to numbers is driving the car on the number. Another thing that I haven't used yet, but I'm super excited to, and again, this is laminated but not cut yet because it's kind of a lot of cutting. I found these as a free download a while back. I'll link it down below. There are so many amazing free and cheap resources out there. Homeschooling does not need to be complicated or expensive. And so I know I'm throwing a lot of things at you today, but it's really just to show you all of the many different ways that you can get your child excited about learning and switch it up on any given day based on what they're interested in. So we will not like sit down at the same exact time every day and do this like super structured lesson time. I don't feel that's necessary, but he really does love those times and I pull out a special little thing and do it one-on-one -on -one with him. He loves flashcards so far. He loves when I set up puzzles and things like that for him and little art projects and stuff like that. So this one is really cool. And while this one is about letter recognition and letter formation, this is really showing like numerical values. So you can use these in a lot of different ways. You could simply have them put like one, two, and three in order. And I would probably start with just one or two or even three. I might do something like letter of the week and number of the week and have the letter be A and the number be one and then just everything about one that week. So this squirrel with the one on him has one acorn. And then maybe the next week, this squirrel with the two on him has two acorns. And then once they start to understand that value piece of it, then you do something like you have the three and you tell them like how many acorns does this squirrel get? He has a one on him and have them give the squirrel one acorn. Now this was just like a lucky serendipitous moment when I realized that the A for acorns, these are not from the same shop, but I just love when it works out that way. So how fun will that be in fall? Like A is for acorns and the squirrels with their acorns, I just love it. Putting it all together, I am going to have him use this workbook and this is fun with numbers, letters, shapes, colors, and animals. And this is my first toddler coloring book. And I love this because it has the simple letters in the beginning, just the letter on the page. And you can do a lot of the same things I talked about before, like the bingo daughters and things like that. It also does the numbers in the same way. And you can see he's already started to color in this a little bit, but it also shows the words. So that's kind of helpful too. Then towards the back, there will be the letter smaller with a big picture with something that starts with the letter like R for rocket, Q for queen. Oh, I almost forgot for numbers. Another little thing that I downloaded a while back were these nature numbers, and I thought, how cool are these? There's acorns again. 
Um, and so there's this poster that has them. And then there are also the flashcards as well as the flashcards with the words. So seven acorns and you can count them and they're in the shape of a number. Okay, just a couple more things, I promise. So this I shared with you guys, both in an unboxing and in my summer homeschool plans, I think I shared this, because we do plan to start some of these things over the summer. That way he'll be familiar with them when the school year comes. And this is the My Preschool Busy Book, and I'll flip through it just really fast in case you've already seen this twice now already, um, but it does cover colors, and all of these things are Velcro which I absolutely love that this is something that he can engage with and use it over and over again. So there are colors, letters, numbers, there's numbers in sequence, shapes, big and small, seasons, whoops, this one's twisted here. The weather, match the picture, and space at the end. So I am going to start this with him very soon. I know that he is absolutely going to love this. In this same set with the shapes puzzle also came the letters and the number ones. So I'll show you these really quick. These are also linked on my Amazon. I have not used these yet, but I'm excited to. So here are the letters. Here are the numbers all the way up to 20. So I do have the Melissa and Doug one that goes up to nine. We've already been using that one and we'll continue to use it. Once I feel like he's sort of mastered that one, we'll start using this. In the meantime, I can definitely use this for math with my five going on six year old. So my upcoming first grader. Introducing and exposing them to these concepts in all different ways, it really keeps it fun for them. Lastly, I just want to show you a few of the learning books that I will be using other than the shapes book. So this is something that has been kicking around in my home since my 13 year old was a baby. So I love using stuff that I already have. I love new stuff, but I love also being able to reuse stuff. It just makes me happy. So if you've never seen the Your Baby Can Read program, it is kind of expensive. So I probably wouldn't recommend buying it new, but if you can find some of the resources, I'll see if any of them are on Amazon for you guys, but it's really cool because it will have just the word. So you would say like smiling. And then it says, the boy is smiling. Are you smiling? So that they can start to put together the fact that the words and the pictures and what you're talking about all go together. And then the same for pointing. And then you can show them, can you point? The boy is pointing. Can you point to the boy's finger? So it's very interactive. I did use this with my 13 year old. I did not do it like religiously and kind of follow all the ways that they said to use it, but we did use these and I plan to use this as well as my son is interested in it. Over on the bookshelves, I try to do a similar thing as what I do on the learning shelf. Not that it's necessarily the same focus, but I try to have related books. So um, on the bottom two shelves, it's usually more board books, more geared for like my one and two year old who will be three in the fall. And then on the middle shelf, it's more like maybe my two year old up to like my 10 year old. And then the top is like my 10 and 13 year old. So I have a lot of ABC books out right now, just as just for exposure. So I have like the little Dr. Seuss ABC book. And I have this A to Z one, which they tend to really love. And I'll just go through and I'll trace as I say it, like A is for aardvark admiring. This one is a lot of fun. It's kind of silly, they like that. This one was a gift for my one-year-old and this is ABC, What Can She Be? And it goes through all these different occupations. How fun is that? So it also exposes them to like different words and occupations. Then one of our favorites around here, which I think I may have had this since my 13 year old was little as well, is ABC Animal Jamboree. And it has the letter and an animal that goes along with the letter and then a little rhyming poem about each one. This book, Fiesta, is about counting, but it has words in both English and Spanish. And we've really been trying to implement some bilingual studies into our learning. And so you'll notice that it says dos trompetas, and then you can say two horns. And then I'll have them count. Can you count the horns? One, two, uno, dos. Lastly, I love Pete the Cat books. 
Pete the Cat books have been around in our home since my 13 year old was young once again. Um, and this one is Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons. And the reason I really love this one for numbers is because it actually shows subtraction. So if you haven't seen it, this is actually signed by the author, which is pretty cool to my son. Um, and I like that it has the number really big and I'll have him trace it. And then it even shows the subtraction sentence right at the bottom. So that's really cool as well. And what I also love about Pete the Cat books is they teach them like, you don't have to get upset when things don't always go right. So I think that's a really important lesson for three-year-olds to learn is kind of like that frustration tolerance or frustration management. As usual, I feel like I threw a lot of stuff at you guys, but I'm really excited about tot school or preschool. And I feel like you can't really go wrong. So this is really just to give you some ideas. You don't have to stress it. You don't have to do anything formal. I really just feel like it's about exposure. It's about teaching them the love of learning, that it's exciting. And if you're not excited about it, chances are they probably won't be excited about it. So find things you're excited to use and just be flexible. So if you find that they love one of the things but don't love the other thing, bring it out every once in a while and see if maybe they change their mind. But if they don't, just that's not the one and that's okay. So just because something works for one kid doesn't necessarily mean it will work for another kid. So my encouragement to you as we wrap up this video is let them be active, have fun, do things like just be out in nature and show them like what color are the leaves? They're green, yay! How many red flowers and count them together. There are so many ways to just do natural organic learning. It does not have to be in a workbook. It does not have to be flashcards. If they love it, great. If they don't, try a different way, get creative. I know we will be getting creative and doing all that we can to make it fun for all of us. So I hope you found this video helpful, even if it just gave you some different ideas, some different resources, got you thinking maybe a little bit differently about how to teach your preschooler some of these concepts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's a free way to just help support my channel. Um, if you find this content helpful, it also lets me know what videos you guys are actually liking so that I know what content to keep bringing you guys versus what you might not be that interested in. Let me know in the comments below if you think you'll try out any of these things or maybe things that you've tried with your toddler or preschooler that have worked really well. If you are here from Nikki's channel, thank you for stopping by. I hope that you'll stick around, subscribe, click that notifications bell. Next week, I will be sharing with you guys some summer morning routines. I'll be sharing some make math fun ideas and also a couple other fun things coming your way. So if you have not checked out Nikki's video yet, click the link in the description box and go see what she is planning to do in her homeschool for this summer. I hope to see you again in some of my next videos and until next time, stay rooted.